nice anonymous voice for nobody? You want for comedy, and everybody knows that comedy is the lowest form of entertainment, next to animation. Here I go, I'm about to freak the flow. About the Cartoon Network and things they show. We got the super adventures, tune heads, and late night. It's black and white, but everything's alright. But I'll break it down a little bit more. Tell you what they have in store, what it's tunes you're looking for. We got Fred Blistone and Body Rubble. Creative, unique, and packed with imagination. These are the cartoons that live outside the industry. Shows that might never get made the normal way, but through pure effort, exist in spite of it. Join me today as I go through the good, the weird, and just plain craziest of the bunch. This will be part of an ongoing series where I show you that indie animation rocks. First off, let's start with something that might have more of a household name attached. If your house is full of animation nerds, that is. Yuki 7 is a show based on the character created by Kevin Dart, an illustrator known for his work on Symbionic Titan, Steven Universe, and that one Powerpuff Girls special that you either love or hate. I like it, by the way. Animated by Chromosphere, a small animation studio that you might recognize from the Netflix series City of Ghosts, and those Steven Universe shorts that you either love or hate. My lawyers have informed me not to mention my side. Leaving a whole lot of questions that don't need to be answered. Yuki 7 is a spy thriller focused on Yuki, the leader of her misfit team of agents. Besides her, you also have Rocket Turtle, a bumbling robot that means well, but is usually the cause of a lot of trouble, and Dr. Goldpaws, who besides from being the bestest boy, is a kitty with a genius level intellect. I was in love with this thing from the moment I saw it. Retro 70s style visuals with one of the slickest art styles I've ever seen in animation. Forget turning this into a full series, I want to see this on the big screen. The story is really cool too, a classic spy thriller with a current of mystery underneath. Yuki doesn't know where her missions come from, or where the other agents went, or even what the device she's trying to get does. Ellie, where do our missions come from? Sorry, I don't understand the question. Would you like some tea? Or your favorite? Pal chocolate? No, that's okay. She's just going with the flow because that's what she's always done. But maybe, if she keeps going on these missions, she might finally be able to uncover everything. So far, three episodes have been released and they're all a blast. The animation, voice work, all of it is on a professional level, which makes sense considering who's working on it. While the pandemic kind of put a damper on the production of Yuki 7, the team has remained hard at work, even coming up with new ways to streamline their workflow using Unreal Engine. It really is a treat to watch. And with all three episodes adding up to about a regular length episode of TV, you guys have got to give this one a try. Yes! Thanks for the pickup, Rocket! Now let's go home. Aw uh, yeah, now this is one I've been following for almost a decade. Tales of Altherion is a fantasy series created by Mikael Mains and Kenneth Logiker. The best way I could describe it is that it's like Adventure Time with tits. Okay, that might not be giving it the justice it deserves. Tales of Altherion is an awesome show, set in a super cool world of fantasy and monsters, but its tone is more in line with Lord of the Rings and stuff like that, with the goofiness and fun of Adventure Time thrown in. But also, yes, there are boobs. The animation is super charming, and I love the character design. It's like Klasky Chupa was actually made to be appealing. 
The backgrounds are great too. They do an awesome job at fleshing the world out and helping to tell the story. Especially how considering that the most interesting part of this series is that it's entirely non-verbal. Sure, the characters make sounds and stuff like that, but no one talks. Which means that all the storytelling and character growth is all left to the animation and music. And man, does it do a good job at that. Every episode follows a different group of characters, but there's a story in the background that ties them all together. So it's less an anthology series and more so just a huge world that we zoom into in different places. The action is exciting and the story is genuinely engaging. It's really touching at some points. Super funny. There's a part where two characters make out so hard they summon lightning. And there is one episode that, no joke, has the best friendship was the real treasure all along ending I've ever seen. Great stuff. Luckily a lot of people think so too, because the pair have had a pretty good success rate with this thing. Two successful kickstarters, a board game, and more and more episodes have been produced. Each one just as good as the last, if not better. I'm usually not that into fantasy stuff, but for some reason when it's animated in a unique way, I tend to go crazy for it. If Game of Thrones had been a cartoon, I would have been there day one. Besides the extra content they've produced for it, like a Choose Your Own Adventure series, right now there's about seven episodes out. With the last one having released just last year, trust me on this one guys, if you want to feel like you just went on an adventure yourself, this show is a must watch. Okay, play ball. Wait, what? Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. What? Alright, let's get weird. Dude, I don't even know how to describe this one. Okay, for those of you who were around before the internet became just like 10 different websites, people used to make their own websites all the time. Just all these weird little sites devoted to the stuff they were into. And that's what Inui the show is. It's a super unique thing that is only interested in being what it wants to be. And darn it man, I'm into that. It's got all that old school Newgrounds charm without uh, the stuff from Newgrounds that maybe didn't age so well. I used the word, I admit it. I thought there was a difference between nigger and nigga. It's essentially just a series full of different sketches, with the flagship one starring the main two characters, Trudy and Lynette. A couple of women just trying to get by in life, with Lynette being super lazy and Trudy being kinda anal, and we follow them on their misadventures as they kinda just stumble through life. Also they're voiced by text-to-speech robots, which you might think was a budget thing, but honestly I just think it's cause it's funnier. Hiya. Kia. Good birdie! First try. It doesn't stop at animation though, and some parts of it are actually done in live action, giving me a real Adult Swim vibe, like Tim and Eric style. There isn't that much of it yet, so I don't really have much of an opinion on it other than I really like the vibe it gives off. Like watching funny internet videos with your friends on killsometime.com at like 2am. To be honest, I wouldn't be surprised at all if I saw this thing on Adult Swim one day. It would fit right in. So if weird, internet-y, Y2K type humor is up your alley, I think you'll really enjoy Inui. Plus look at their website, this thing is a time capsule. How did they make this in this time period? Cartoon Network. I like boys. Cartoon Network. One, a two. People who do this for a living deserve more credit and respect! This one is for all the old school weebs out there. If you miss waking up at 8am to watch stuff like Mew Mew Power and Beyblade, then Golden Panda is the thing for you. Created by Soap Studio, Golden Panda is one of those classic shows that I feel like four kids would have a field day with. While Soap Studio was mostly just a small toy design studio based in Korea, they have since expanded into making their own original animation. And to be honest, it just makes sense. 
Cartoons used to just be toy commercials, so if you're already doing one, you might as well do the other. It also makes sense because of how ridiculously marketable this show feels. But at least it has some cool style to back it up so it doesn't just feel like a plot to get your money. Golden Panda tells the story of three kids who happened upon three construction robots and used them to battle against evil robots. Doesn't get more simple than that. Classic shonen story of good versus evil. But the thing that really sets it apart is the look. Like I mentioned before, Soap was a toy company first, so all the robots have this great vinyl toy-like design. But everything is cell shaded with a bold outline to make it really pop. It kind of reminds me of Mega Man in a way. And also makes me sad because I wish that Mega Man Fully Charged show looked like this. They even have their own rival robot, with the widest birthing hips ever, Jesus. They got back! The only thing that might hold it back is that you can really tell it's made for smaller children. It can be a little too high energy, and the characters seem kind of basic so far. Nerdy boy, Ginky girl, Shonen Pro Tag, you've seen these guys before. But this is only the pilot, so they could definitely still improve it. Also, while some of the English voice acting is fine, some of it leaves a bit to be desired. He ran into trouble. I think they came from Dr. Doe's lab. Could you speak up? I'm not wearing pants. I don't know if they're trying to pitch this to a bigger studio, but for now, I still consider it indie. I'm really interested in seeing if this goes anywhere, especially because I want toys of all the robots, they're so cool. For some reason, they unlisted the pilot on their YouTube page, but you can still watch it through a playlist they made. Maybe they're gonna spend some time fine-tuning it, I don't know. But I'm definitely interested in seeing this thing become a full series, and if it does become one, it better have a terrible rap song for its opener. Name's Zolo, he's just like a samurai and a L-A-D-Y, Nami's not shy. You're under arrest, Russo. Man, swarm him! Okay, so this is one that I kinda have mixed feelings on, but it does enough right that I still want to give it a shout out. Boxcar City Rush is a short created by Jens Vata. It tells the story of Charlotte, a police officer that hunts vampires, and Darian the vampire that helps her out in her fight. First things first, this thing is dripping in style. It's like Hotel Dust meets Pantheon Stocking. Sharp, angular character designs, my favorite. And the cool, vibrant, urban world. Love it. Also love the dynamic between the two characters. Really fun stuff. Darian's always joking around and Charlotte just really wants to get the job done. But she might not be the best at it. The animation is really cool too. It's limited, but the strong poses really help sell the action. They definitely use their time and budget wisely. There's even some shots that are told like a manga, which makes sense, this thing was based on a webcomic. The music is really good too. It's done by the homie Scottoon Network. They make really good stuff, you should def check them out. The only real issue I have with it, and sadly it's a big one, is the voice acting. Some of the mixing is really weird, and the actual performances aren't really the best. But to be honest, I think people give amateur voice actors too hard a time. Is it the best? No. But I could tell they were trying their best. It might be a little shaky, but I think that with time and practice they can definitely improve. You see people getting slammed for stuff like this all the time, and that's not critique. That's bullying. And not the fun kind like dunking on stupid kids on Twitter. So yeah, the vocal stuff needs a little work. But this is still a really fun little short. And I think that it's worth your time. The cool urban fantasy elements are right up my alley. If you throw in a little more action, oh man, then we'll be cooking. So if you're down for a cool time with a really unique art style and fun characters, give this one a shot. This one is so cool, especially because it panders incredibly hard to me. You guys know who I am, you guys know who I worship, and the Dark Harvest definitely leans into the 2000s cartoon style that is very inspired by the works of Gindy Tartakovsky and Scott Willis. Created by Brian V, who I've been following since the Tumblr days back when he was Roasted Sticks, The Dark Harvest is a show about a young woman who, after falling on hard times, takes up the job of being a grim reaper. First off, 
That's such a cool concept for a show. I've seen it done before, sure, but every time it's done, it's always done in a new and exciting way. This one is cool because it looks like the job actually runs in her family, or at least her adopted family, I'm not quite sure. But anyway, I'm in love with how this thing looks. Those bold, thick outlines, ah, oh yeah, inject that into my veins. And those backgrounds are gorgeous as well. I love watching his speed paints. The dude has mastered the style that has eluded me for years. And while I am steaming with jealousy, I'm also super impressed. So I will spare him. We get to follow Haley as she learns about ghosts, where to find them, and how to send them to the afterlife. And spoiler alert, some of them don't want to go so peacefully. She's led by her mentor Marcus, who I assume is a seasoned Grim Reaper who is now retired. So far there's only one episode out, but a preview for the next episode has been released. And it seems like everything from the animation to the backgrounds has been improved. In fact, if there was one thing holding this back, I would say it's the animation. It can be a little stiff, and the posing could definitely use some work. But looking at the small preview clip of the next episode, I can definitely tell that he's improved. And for a one-man team handling the character design, backgrounds, animation, and music, I can definitely cut him some slack. Sadly, he doesn't update very often, but hey, animation takes a long time. And he helps out on hell of a boss from time to time, so you just gotta be patient. And don't worry, I'll wait as long as it takes, because this is definitely something I want to see more of. Alright, now here's a fun one. Do you like high paced action? Bloody high stakes battle? Adorable fuzzy plushes? Well then, you're exactly the right kind of sicko who would be into bloody bunny. And dude, I am too. First off, for this one I'm not really sure if it could be counted as indie or not. The company that made it, T-Spot Communications, has done deals with like 7-Eleven and even the popular singer Ayumi Hamasaki. But like, I don't know, this thing feels indie to me. Plus I have more Twitter followers than them, so I'm gonna say it counts. While Bloody Bunny has a couple of different series, the one that I'm gonna focus on today is Bloody Bunny The First Blood. Seeing how that's both the most accessible one and the one with the most complete story. So what is it? Bloody Bunny is the story of a world taken over by vicious plush animals. While escaping from one of their facilities, a young girl is captured and killed by them, only to have her soul put into the body of a plush, turning her into Bloody Bunny a violent killing machine, and merchandisable character. <laughs> now she fights against the evil plushes to protect her world and her sister, who has also been made into a plush. Now where do I start with this one, man? It is pure adrenaline, almost non-stop action, just the way I like it. We follow Bunny as she hacks, slashes, and pummels every enemy that dares step into her path. And it is a sight to behold. Super stylish animation is on full display here. The characters have this great cell shaded look to them, and the colors just pop off the screen. Gorgeous stuff. I totally buy a toy of literally every character. And the action is well animated too. All the hits feel weighty and impactful. The music and sound effects really help to sell it. A big problem that I have with 3D action shows is that a lot of the action feels so unsatisfying, but all the camera movements and effects going off in this really helped add some oomph. It's the same reason I think the action works so well in the 2012 TMNT. That's the cutest fucking thing I've ever seen in my entire life. There isn't much of a story here, it's just Bunny fighting and getting her revenge on the plushies. Though there is a small plot revolving around her sister that gets fleshed out as the story progresses. But who cares about that, more fighting! Bloody Bunny combines two of my favorite things, cute stuff and violence. Oh! So if you also wish Sanrio had a bit more carnage, then Bloody Bunny is for you. Okay, this one hits in a way that is right up my alley. 
Caro Caro Groove is a show that fills that void left behind by the cool urban experimental adult animation of the 2000s. Oh man, that was a mouthful. Stuff like Mission Hill and Downtown. The shows that just kinda hit different when you're drunk at 3am eating a burger and vibing with your boys. And man, they are committed to the bit. It's even uploaded at 480p. This thing feels like you're time traveling. It's even got really cool bumpers and fake commercials and stuff like that. Got me over here feeling envious. The animation is limited but expressive, and I love the use of simple 3D assets that they splice in with the 2D animation. And the two main characters are so fun, I would definitely watch a full series featuring them. Apparently their names are Chain and Car Key? Sounds normal to me. But really, if you miss those old days of MTV animation, you gotta put this one on. There's only two episodes, and you can watch all of it in under five minutes, or maybe seven if you watch the cut with commercials. Whichever you choose, Caro Caro Groove makes for some perfect midnight fun. When does the bus... Okay, now we're talking. I saved the best for last. Out of all the cartoons I've talked about today, this one has got to be my favorite. I remember when the trailer for it came out, I knew it was going to be something special. And then it premiered, and I watched it. <laughs> Mind blown. And then I watched it again, and again, two more times, one more, and then I had to stop because I had stuff to do. But I watched it on the car ride over. Lucky Boy is one of those special shows. The kind of thing where it just fits your vibe to a T. The music, the visuals, the character, the story. I was in love top to bottom. I was telling all my friends, sharing it around. I'm glad Lucky is a sock puppet because if he wasn't, I would have been all up on his Lucky Boy is the story of Lucky, an overworked pizza delivery boy who desperately wants to impress his crush, a girl who works at a music store he likes to daydream at. But Lucky is broke and underappreciated, and even though he excels at music, he's got no money to buy a guitar. But one day, he happens across a ton of cash in the garbage. The only problem is, well, let's just say that that money isn't just dirty because it was in the trash. So we follow him on his journey to get the guitar, get the girl, and to get a life. I instantly connected with Lucky. I know what it's like to be a creative person working a dead-end job. It's soul-crushing, dude. All day long, all these ideas are just running through your head. But by the time you get home, the only thing you can do is sleep and the cycle repeats again. Every creative person has had the fantasy of just one thing they do blowing up and finally getting them out of minimum wage hell and into the life they deserve. And Lucky Boy portrays that perfectly. All the side characters are great too. Lucky's sleazy boss, the cute girl Lucky has a crush on, I love them all. But what really caught my eye was the way this thing looks. I love urban environments, and this is one of my favorite depictions of a city ever. The way they edited the photo backgrounds, messing with the contrast, adding color schemes, it's all so cool. It's kind of similar to the way I edit photos for my videos, but these guys have a way better handle on it. I actually got in contact with the creator of Lucky Boy, Dominic Romano, and he's a super nice guy. He sent me all this concept art and behind the scenes stuff, and it's all gold, dude. And don't get me started on the animation in this thing. Hand drawn, 3D, live action. This thing takes mixed media to a whole new level, and I am here for it. They even set up a custom pipeline for mocap and blender for the hand puppet stuff. Dude, I freaking love this. The only problem with Lucky Boy I have is that it ends and I don't have more of it to watch. Serious kudos to Dom and the rest of his team. I can tell they have some bright futures ahead of them in the world of animation. And if my glowing praise of this isn't enough to get you to watch it, then stay tuned for when my interview with Dominic goes up. Hopefully it won't just be me sucking his And that's everything we have time for today. I hope some of these caught your eye. Do you have any suggestions for future indie animation you want me to shout out? Or maybe you yourself are working on something? Leave a comment down below and I'll check it out. In a world where the animation industry feels like it's getting stagnant, it's always nice to watch some stuff that you know was made with only love for the medium. So many different genres, styles, and techniques are on display here. It can really help you fall in love with animation again. And that is why indie animation rocks.